In the heart of the River Kingdoms lies an old Pathfinder Lodge, once thought lost. A lodge shrouded in secrecy and mystery, driving many to believe that its goals are not that of exploration, but of more nefarious purposes. Recently, an unknown venture captain has reopened the lodge and recruited a new group of Pathfinder agents to do its bidding. Whether their goals are to benefit the society or something much more sinister is yet to be seen. Welcome to Tales from the Black Lodge. Hey everyone, welcome to Rule for Combat's Tales from the Black Lodge. I'm your GM and host, Steven Glicker. And in this week's episode, we start a brand new tale. Tale number two, The Burden of Envy. So for those of you who want to know, the way we organize these is that the name of the tale is also the name of the Pathfinder Society adventure. That way you could very easily determine whether or not you want to listen to that tale now or later, because perhaps maybe you're playing that adventure in a week or so, and you don't want any spoilers, so you can just save it until after you play it, and then you can compare notes. Each chapter is, well, a section of the tale, so expect each tale to have somewhere between three to five chapters, depending on how long it takes for us to play it. One thing we're doing that's a little bit different is Pathfinder Society games are supposed to be run in four to five hours at most. Since we're online and the podcast and we're not doing it all in one session, which is allowed, we are not always holding to those rules. I'm actually allowing everyone to take time and explore things, so I'm not going to be rushing people like you normally would when you're playing a Pathfinder Society game. Pathfinder Society games sometimes feel very rushed, especially in the role-playing aspect, because you have to get it all done. So often it'll be like, okay, you do this, you do that, you do this, let's make some rolls, and you're done. Nice thing about the podcast is we can take our time, we can really get into the role-playing, I can let people just breathe, and we're not on the clock so much. In the end, the edited version, the one that you're going to hear, is probably going to be somewhere between four or five hours. In reality, it's probably much longer, and this is one of those that's much longer, because I'm mixing up the types of adventures they're doing. This one, The Burden of Envy, is very, very heavy role-playing. There's very little combat in this one. I don't think that's really a spoiler, that's just the way this one's set up. And the way these are set up is they usually have like five to six encounters. And in each encounter, it's usually social or combat, or some combination of the two. But that's kind of what these are, you know, if you think about it. Everything is either social or combat. Sometimes you have these adventures that are all social, sometimes you have adventures that are all combat, and sometimes you have the mixture. One thing is that no Pathfinder Society adventure doesn't have zero combat. They always have a minimum of one to two encounters, so every time you're always going to have a little bit of combat. And the same thing goes for social encounters. You'll always have perhaps one or two social encounters, and then everything in between. This was an extremely highly rated Pathfinder adventure, so I thought I would run it. And because it's heavy role-playing, we get to do a lot of fun things with these characters. On top of that, the place the adventure is run, there's a ton of opportunity for them to get into lots of trouble and a lot of good role-playing. So who could pass that up? Not I, I will tell you. Something else I want to mention in this adventure that comes up right away is that all the knowledges are rolled by the GM now in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And here's the greatest part. If you fail the check, the GM can give you misleading or wrong information. Or better yet, if you critically fail the check, you will get not only wrong information, but you are convinced that that wrong information is in fact correct information. I bring that up because that will happen several times in this episode in which I will be making rolls 
And I can't help but laugh. I mean, they always know, you know, the thing is a lot of times you're going to know if the information's wrong because you might ask, oh, what's this information on a monster or a god or something else that you know as a human being that you, the player, knows what the actual answer is. It's almost more fun to get the answer wrong, knowing that you got the answer wrong and then playing along that you got the answer wrong. It's actually really, really fun. It's a great mechanic. I love it a lot. The only time you can't get into trouble is when you actually are looking for something that you don't know as a player, and then you get the information wrong, and then it can cause confusion. As a GM, you just got to be really careful that you don't do that, because I've actually done that, and then suddenly people are going in the wrong direction, and it could derail the adventure. So you have to do it in a kind of fun and playful way, a way that won't affect the main plot or the adventure. Anyhow, I only bring that up because you're going to be hearing that a few times in this episode and be aware that any time that I'm rolling, especially on knowledge checks, that if I critically fail the roll, that they're going to learn wrong information. Really, really wrong information. But with that, let's get to tale number two, The Burden of Envy. You are currently gathered aboard the Merry Mayfly, a ship you believe is heading towards Zin Esdrael, the capital of New Thassalon. Zin Esdrael is famous, or perhaps infamous, for being ruled by Belmarius, the tenth and final rune lord of Envy. Belmarius is a harsh ruler and controls all aspects of her subjects' lives. Desiring freedom from the Rune Lord's oppression is risky, as she sees such deserters as traitors for daring to claim that any land could be superior to one under her rule. Accordingly, Balamarius threatens anyone attempting to flee her realm without permission with summary execution, sans trial. All you know about your contact is a time and a place to look in the sea. Welcome to Tales from the Black Lodge. So today, we will go through our members of the Black Lodge and our special guest this week. First, do we want to start with John Stats? I am John Stats, and I play Mr. Peepers. He is the world's most unaware halfling. He has a reputation for finding trouble where there shouldn't be any. And he's cheerful. And he has no sense of self-preservation or regard for uptight concepts like ownership. And he has gone from place to place. And when things get too hot, he moves on. And he has now found his way to a new group of people. None of them have been put in prison. And he's going to hang with these guys for a while. Mr. Peepers. Everyone loves Mr. Peepers. It's just a matter of time before he ends up dead in an alleyway without anyone even knowing it occurred. Next up is Jason. Who are you playing, Jason? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm Jason McDonald. Uh, I'm playing Nella Amberleaf, a half-elf druid. Uh, She's eventually going to be going the wild shape route, so she'll eventually be turning into all sorts of interesting critters. But right now, her critter turning skills are not all that developed, so she mostly sits back and chucks fire at stuff. And then next we have Seth Lipton. What are you playing, Seth? Nix Nox, half goblin, half fire elemental. He's a sorcerer, and uh, he clings to the shadows and has a menacing gaze. And then finally, the last regular member of the Black Lodge is Chris Beamer. Who are you playing today? I am playing Thorgrim Stoutbrew. Thorgrim Stratbrew, the dwarf champion, who had little memory of his early life studied blacksmithing and mining, became a slave in the lands of Cheliax, and has freed himself and found his way and was saved, in fact, by the Pathfinder Society as he owes them a lifelong debt. And also his own agenda is to promote good and destroy evil. Excellent. And this week's special guest star is none other than Roll for Combat's very own Rob Tremarco, who will you be playing, Rob? Thanks for that, Stephen. Hi, I'm Roll for Combat's Rob Tremarco. I'll be playing Thoradin Bloodhammer, witch-wary dwarf fighter. 
Uh, I believe his uh, untrusting nature of those finger swingers came from when he was defending a hold and um, his compatriots were bewitched one by one and their minds were twisted. Uh, now he, he keeps an eye out. He has a good eye for uh, people and things who are under the sway of magic. And uh, he's joined with the Pathfinder Society to uh, root out such in infiltrations and evils. Excellent. So, as I said before, you're on a ship. You have left your last assignment, and you were told to get on the ship that you would meet your contact in the ocean. You have a little bit of time to kill. What do you do? Um, what it? What do you mean by in the ocean? That's a pretty broad. Uh, uh do you see the boat? We're on yeah, the ocean. I, we're on a boat. On I, mean, I know, but I mean, does that mean they're going to be on this boat, or we're meeting another boat, or we're jumping into the ocean, or we're crossing? Like, what do we know anything more than that? I am absolutely not doing any of those things. No. Uh, I water, water. I do not like water. <laughs> I am running to the darkest part of the hold and hiding there. Well, if my character is anything like me, I'll be vomiting a lot as I tend to get seasick. Oh, come on, guys. This is the, it's a boat. There's there's all kinds of places to climb. Look, there's a crow's say, nest I, up there. I say, uh, all right, Mr. Peepers, um, let's go talk to this Thorodin. Uh, he's a dwarf, and I we should see what he's all about. He's new uh, and untested. Hmm. So I walk over to Thordim. I say, "I well met, brother. Hail, brother. You and my name, your name is very similar to mine. Perhaps we're related. That's not how that works. I'm a bloodhammer. That's my clan. Right. Well, <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and I'm a stout brew. So yeah. Aye. Do you have brew aboard this vessel? Mm, you know, I do not. But perhaps this is a well-stocked vessel. We should maybe make a raid." upon its stores and see what they have. This is Mr. Peepers. Hello there. Greetings, Mr. Peepers. Hi Mr. There. Peepers is very skilled at what he does, but he can get a little off track, so keep your eye on him. Oh, not and Watch me. your purse at all times. <laughs> no, no, not me. I'm just... We're trying to... We're looking for our contact out here, and I'm thinking of climbing this crow's nest that I'm right next to. If we can get a high enough, we can see a lot further than what we can see on deck. I uh, keep a lookout. Yeah, Mr. Peepers, I'm not climbing up that with my metal armor. I'm oh. too heavy. I can barely right. swim. You know what? This is this is a job for a thief. So I'm going to make my... Uh, I don't know. There's probably... I don't even think I need to make a roll. I just... Nah, you can yeah, climb up. Yeah. It's designed for... Even I could climb up that, actually. I bet. In real life. Even you. I don't know about maybe in real life 20 years ago. Well, no, in real life now and uh, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Uh, Thorodin. Hi. I, I see. Well, what kind of weapons does he have, actually? Uh, he's got on him on his back is a, is a wooden shield and a, a battle axe. And also he has a uh, two-handed maul. Nice. Uh, on, um, on Thorgrim, you see a steel shield, a trident. And a battle axe, mm. and a javelin, and a javelin, and like a small bandolier with javelin or a quiver, I should say. Yes. Um, mm, you should perhaps upgrade your shield to steel. I I would have, but money at level one was a little sparse. <laughs> yes. Well, we should spar perhaps and test our skills in battle. Right now on the ship? Are you sure? Yes. On a rolling deck, what better way to get your footing? And I produce my trident and I attack in, in a. In a <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but in first a, rule of Pathfinder Society: no PvP. No, no, I know, but no, but in a, uh, a sparring mode, an uh, invisible all, force, an nerf, invisible nerf force weapons, keeps you from weapons. attacking. It, it's non-lethal damage. Now this is like yeah. the World of Warcraft duel. It's the it's yeah, a yeah, friendly right. it's a friendly duel. That's all it is. Exactly. Well, while the dwarves are dueling, Mr. Peeper sees a dolphin swimming towards the ship with a definitive purpose. 
Okay, so he's up on the uh, mast. I'm actually, I don't know what the, I, I'm ashamed. I don't know what the rigging that is climbable. I don't know what those little net things are called. Those like little ladder things that are like. Rigging, I think, is <sighs> sufficient. Yeah. That's the over, it's, it's, it's basically the modern term is stay. Stay of the mast stay. But I don't know. Anyway, I want to decline of those little mast thingies. But uh, I am going to watch this dolphin. And I'm going to. See if the dolphin does anything undolphin like. It's got a sword. Oh uh, no, it's just a dolphin, and a later. It, it it swims over and starts squeaking and making a lot of noise. Oh my gosh, these dolphins! Leave this to me. I got this. All right, I'm gonna climb down, uh, and I'm gonna go to the side of the sh- to the ship where the dolphin is. I'm just gonna pick a side. They're probably. Let's see, we're not going to go fast enough that they're going to be in the wake. Yeah, that's right there. You can see the dolphin's right there. You oh, can okay. see the dolphin. Look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> he is kind of cute. Dolphin. And he Hi there, dolphin. What's out. going on? He looks at you and he says, in perfect common, good morning, fellow seekers of knowledge. And you're like, oh, boy, it's a talking dolphin. Good morning, go- so dolphin. Does the door open and I hear this? Like, Boy, dolphins yeah. are smart. Yeah, oh, guys, get like here. But Did then, you like, guys we, know dolphins talk? talk to the dolphin. They're dolphin. seriously right, smart. Yes, there's a dolphin talking. You can, wow. You don't, don't see that every day. And the dolphin starts talking to you and says, Oh, excellent, excellent, everyone. Crowd around. Good morning, fellow seekers of knowledge. And it starts like in between, like those little clicks and like little dolphin noises. And stuff. <laughs> as you are probably aware, Zen Ezardal is a country of strict edicts, cruel acts, and feverish bureaucracy. Few are allowed into the city, and even fewer are permitted to leave. That is where you come in, as we have the opportunity to smuggle several important citizens out of the city and to freedom. And does like a little bit more clicks and like sort of like puts some little <laughs> yeah it's like puts its, <laughs> its its nose down into the water and so forth. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to rendezvous with another vessel, the Lightbringer, and meet your contact there. She will debrief you on the details of your mission and provide the necessary paperwork to allow you to enter and move about the city. However, be careful, agents. Melamarius is a cruel rune lord and will think nothing of disposing. Of a few troublemakers. Wait, did you say Rune Lord? Yes, oh, a Rune a, Lord. A, a Rune Lord, okay. <laughs> Violence right. is treated harshly, often with immediate execution. As always, should any member of your team be caught or killed while performing dishonorable deeds, the society will disavow all knowledge of your actions. Good luck, Pathfinders. This dolphin will self-destruct in five seconds. Mr. Peepers is going to wave to the dolphin. And it's like clicking and like doing little trips. And then it goes underwater and it does a big backflip. And then right as it's in the air, it just goes poof and disappears in a puff of smoke. Whoa, I don't like the sound of this land. I'm extremely devoted to my god. I'm extremely devoted to Iomidi. And Iomidi is not going to be happy with the lands we're going to. Well, I'm... I hope I can contain myself. How did this from attacking topic... all the Whoa. evil I see? Well, that that's true, but the concern that I have for this moment is this: was this explosion like a cartoony explosion, or was this yeah, kind of like, like a depth charge? Yeah, or was this like a blood and guts one thing? No, there, it was a cartoony. Oh, oh, good. Okay, appeared. good. Like a fake right. creature of some kind. Yeah, it just sort of looked. It literally did a jump out of the water and then went poof and just disappeared. It wasn't like the end of Jaws, okay. <laughs> which is okay, so. Good. Yeah. All right, that's a good thing. Um. I'm disturbed by this. I'm not happy about this at all. Because oh, this is this a is terrible nothing. place to go. All you got to do is get Peebers off the boat. I feel Mr. get us all arrested. Just get I feel. off the boat. Get off the boat and get onto another I boat. Say, That's the mission. Thor- That's, Thor- That's Thor- a simplest Thor- mission. Yeah, I whis- I'm whispering to Thor Odin. I say, you're, you're, you're an audible uh, warrior. Keep your I eyes. Am. If, I, if I cannot keep my eyes on Mr. Peepers, keep your eyes on Mr. Peepers. He can sell us all out. Uh, <laughs> he may <laughs> wander too far. He doesn't seem the type. He, but he could be he could wander too far and go where he's not wanted. We should keep he, a tight knit group. 
No, you, you you got all this wrong. This is this is a milk run. You understand? Let's, this is. Let's see how it goes. It's, you <laughs> get off of a boat to go it's onto our another job boat. To go There's to never been an easier quest than this. This is exactly. this is where you just run out the clock. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> yep, you're all gonna die. No problem. <laughs> I love this one. This is a great adventure. I fire that cannon at Mister Peepers. All right, later that day, sure enough, you rendezvous with the Lightbringer, and you go on. We're doing a boat switch in the high seas. That's crazy. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's like, wow. You do rendezvous with the Lightbringer. (laughs) Depends on, like, uh, wind conditions, really. Yeah, it's not that hard. (laughs) You you go below decks. I mean, the point is we're switching boats. Like, why would you ever have to switch a boat to go into this land? This land is bad. Is it, uh, is it Jack Ryan getting lowered onto the submarine from the helicopter? Yes, exactly. Oh, yes. no, 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 no. You guys got this yep. all wrong. You swing from one boat to another. Come on. Get into the spirit like of things, guys. Swashbuckler style? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Is every single one of our adventures going to turn into the Goonies? That, that's what happened <laughs> last time, and now it's going to be this one, too. Uh, and there was boats in the Goonies. Hey, you guys! God, such a good movie, though. It is a good movie. I love that movie. So, you get brought down below decks, and there you see a female and a snarky-looking male. The woman looks at you all. And introduces herself and says, Hello, everyone. I'm Valerie Durant. And she makes all of your acquaintances. Yeah, Mr. Peepers is going to get next knocks so that he doesn't miss this because he's going to want to know what's going on. You'll find that. Yes. Yeah. It might Whatever take a while. Like, Valerie says, says, I need your help for a task that requires both great risk and discretion. The Azari woman gestures to a green-eyed Verassian man who flashes a sly grin framed by a thin mustache. This is Garnel Kareth, a prominent figure among the Sinari, she continues. The Sinari maintain a smuggling ring, providing freedom to those chafing under the oppression of Valmarius, the rune lord of Envy and ruler of Edesriel. Demand for such services is high. She pauses and casts a somewhat disdainful glare towards Geriel, allowing the Cisnari to extract hefty sums from desperate patrons. I find the practice rather distasteful, she sighs. However, collaboration with his operations grants the Radiant Oath some measure of oversight in ensuring proper treatment of the refugees. Further, I have his personal assurance that the Cisnari will not demand more in payment than their clients can afford. Transportation's expensive, Garnal chimes in, not to mention paying off border guards and harbor masters. It's dangerous work, you see. Certainly you wouldn't expect my people to take such risk and not properly compensated, would you? Or have you forgot that Balmarius has placed a price on my head? Not the first to do so, I'm sure, Valerius notes before continuing. Balmarius and her minions begin to suspect Garnel's intentions the last time he was in Ezredel. Now they seek not only his head but those of his known associates, including those amongst the Pathfinder Society. It's presently not safe for them or Garnel to venture within Ezradil's borders. I had a number of clients ready to go before leaving Zin Ezradil, explains Garnel. Most of the arrangements were already made. All you need to do is make contact with the clients, give them the time and place for their departure, and escort them out of the city with their payment, of course. He stresses that last part. You'll get a hefty cut of the payment you secure as compensation for your hard work. With that, he whips out a list. I've prepared a client list, he says, handing over a sheet of scrawled paper. Memorize it. Then tear it up, burn it, chew it, swallow it, do whatever you wish. 
but get rid of it. If Balmarius gets hold of it, it's a death sentence for anyone named on it. And probably you as well. Nyx Knox appears out of nowhere. But let me ask one question. You have your own agents. You have a business. You've been doing this for years. Why us? They look at each other and they look back at Nick Stock and say, Simple, you're unknown. All of my associates are well known and will be picked up immediately by Balmeria as she's been set on alert. We need people that have never encountered the city or the guards before. You five would be perfect for this. Mr. Peeper says, they're right. We're perfect for this. Nobody knows who I am. I change my identity all the time. I love this. Next, Ox disappears back into the shadows. They both continue to talk to you. She says, you'll be entering Zin Ezradel disguised as merchants. These papers will allow you passage in and out of the city for five days before they expire. And she hands you over all your papers that you're going to be showing to the guards many many times at dawn on the fourth day after your arrival the ship Ralnon's prayer will arrive in the bay just outside the city in shard cove the boat can accommodate five clients providing an excellent opportunity to escape undetected one of the clients flitch knows a secret tunnel to shard cove once the clients are aboard the ship Make sure to return to the city. Any remaining clients that you weren't able to smuggle out by sea, you'll have to smuggle out of the city with you, which means you'll have to get them past the guards on the docks. Your ship, the Merry Mayfly, must depart the docks once your papers have expired. The clients are expecting to deal with me, cautions Garnel. But as that's not possible, as it's now a few days past the window... When I was able to make contact, the clients might need some reassurance to go through with the job. He gives you all a stern look and then warns. While you're in Balmaris' backyard, be careful. Very careful. You are foreigners or Zin Ezredel, and Balmarius has ears and eyes everywhere. Don't do anything that would draw unnecessary attention to yourselves. The last thing you want to do is tangle with the authorities. The Rune Lord's forces are well trained and quite capable. Keep your wits about you at all times and your blades sheathed. We cannot afford one of you being arrested or interrogated. Pay any bribe required to remain free. I don't want to further expose any part of this operation, he says quite sternly. Our goal here is to bring hope and freedom to as many souls as we are able. It is risky, but hope and freedom are worth the price. And with that, they both look at you and she says, do you have any questions? It is a worthy goal. And I also seek all of these goals. This is a horrific land run by awful guidance. We must free all we can, and we will. We will free them all. You have my pledge as a dwarf. You have my pledge as a champion. They shall all be set free. So says I. There will be justice. Yeah, this whole discretion thing, we do that anyway. So this is going to be an easy thing. So I look over the papers. Like, What kind of papers are they? Do you have a description? Uh, he included the papers. I read the papers. They kind of don't make sense. They don't. You might have to explain this. It Those are like the five dialogue. people we need to free. Yes. That's, yeah. That's, that's... That's, there's names, but there's like dialogue there. Like no, I mean, I mean, like the, uh, I, I mean, like our credentials. Like the, he had this fake credentials, and what, what's the, what's the nature of them? Their papers allow you to move within the city as merchants. And you can stay there for five days after you arrive. After that, your papers expire. Are, 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 we, are we dealers in Trillium? Kivis and Trillium. Kivis uh, and Trillium? Nobody knows what that is. At this point, all you're doing is... I get the flame gems. All you're doing is exploring trade partners and potential. You actually don't have anything you're buying or selling as of yet. So are these names... are personalities 
are, are no these are the five these are the people that need to be free and who right okay that's what to... i thought okay yes i did i did notice a couple of these are for more than one person like one of them says a better life for him and his daughter does that imply yeah. there's some of that there's more than five total people yeah that's gonna be a little extra oh yes yes as i said the boat can handle five but all together i believe there's nine perhaps so we're talking multiple trips or do we get no. to choose who leaves or who doesn't no no they both look perturbed at you after you say this mr peepers they say no you can smuggle five through the ship on the dawn of the fourth day and then whoever is left, you must sneak them past the docks onto the ship that you're to take leaving the city. Because there's Uleg who has a, right. a daughter, and then oh, Daffred right. has okay. a spouse and two kids. There is a, the bringing of people to a point, and then like the last two come out with us if we make it. You mean the last four? The last four. There's nine. There's five on a boat. There's four left over. So, I think like the kids are like don't count. Like it's, it's five things we have. We have to five things. We have no, to. no, no. Yeah. It's, it's it's nine people total. They look nine. at you and they say, <laughs> "There's Filch. There's He's a dwarf. Math is not you know. <laughs> there's nine. I'm not, I'm not really good list. with the math. Actually, yeah, it's like, <laughs> the math in my brains is not so good. That's what we bring Nick Snox for. So yeah, so all right, so so just just, just like preliminary matters, like th like we have all the we have all the details on like where they are in the city and you know how to find them and what location, you know, like like we have the, we have directions, right? You have that piece of paper. That is what you have. Yeah. So I, I don't see any addresses paper. on this piece of paper. Yeah. Right? You well, know, like you know. There, so so it's like are we are we expected to kind of just sort of ask around and sort of and sort of determine where these people like you know sure. like the rockfish well, they, in sure. like they have like, locate they have locations I mean the, yeah, they sound pretty fish prominent in. within oh. town yeah so this is a podcast why doesn't someone read the piece of paper so everyone can hear who they've been trying to pick up if someone wants to take that on that's not me oh there's all a right lot. I'll do that I'll do that okay all right so uh, Filch. Uh, and this, this is all with notations from, I assume, from uh, from the smuggler guy. Filch. Correct. Uh, wouldn't need my help Which. if he'd been a better thief. Still, he's Fralinos. Fralinos? Fralino? Fralino. Fralino. Welcome Fralino. to my world. Exactly. It's yeah, close no, it's like, Fralino. oh, God, yeah, his name. All right, so he's, Fr he's Fralino's nephew. Uh, so we can't just leave him hanging. Uh, if he's smart, he'll lay low in his flat. Find it in Envery Row East, off uh, the alley between Copper Street and Loyalty Way. Uh, if he questions you, tell him that uh, his uncle's been asking about the slippers. And the reason why I'm asking is like, can we like like is the narrative that we can just say we go to uh, Envy Row East off of uh, off of the Correct. alley between Copper Street and Loyalty Way, and we can just know where that is? Like we don't Correct. have the attraction of guards to get the directions or any of that. All right. Correct. Okay. So uh, the next one, uh, uh, if he questions you, tell him that his uncle's been asking about his slippers. All right, so, that, so that's an important piece of information. That's the password. So the uncle's been asking about his slippers. Uh, Thelmalin, this accountant's got money. Lots of it. Promise quite a haul for our services. Don't, uh, don't leave him without it. All right, so it's him and a big bag of money. Uh, works for the Ministry of Tithes, auditing taxes and some such. Seems he found some, uh, some innocent error involving numbers and now lives in constant fear of being found out. Uh, his uh, desperation is our gain. Don't forget his payment. All right, so that's twice in that. All right, so it's going to be him and a big bag of money. We got to figure that out. Uh, Yuleg owns the Rockfish Inn. Uh, oh, okay. So wait, so Themelin is at the, he works for the Ministry of Tides. So I guess we'll have to find him at the Ministry of Tides. All right, now Yuleg owns the Rockfish Inn. Nice guy. Wants a better life for him and his daughter. Uh, don't accept fish for payment, though. Okay, so we got to talk to him, and he's going to be a little bit of a comedy act, and uh, we got to manage him and his daughter. All right. Daffred teases at Arcanum Abjurant, or what's left of it. Once, what is it? I wonder what that means. Once uh, out of the city, along with her spouse and two kids, longs to see uh, what the world is like after 5,000 years. Interesting. 
uh world may have changed but her gold hasn't okay so, so what she, she's probably some like million year old elf or something like that um uh garala filch uh brought me a note he found Fletch. underneath an overturned flower pot on uh, his window still which read ready to join emerald guard house ask for garla uh remaining half paid a uh, remaining half paid upon departure sounds risky sure but the bag the note was tied to held a lot of coins okay they're expecting uh to be dealing with yours truly so you may need some assurances before closing the deal don't go messing up my reputation you got that so now if i understand from the from the description that you gave there's two routes onto the boat there's a secret passageway and there's bluffing past the guards or forcing away past the guards somehow getting past guards now is it definitely the case that uh there's some ass there's some quality about the secret passageway that we're not that we're definitely not going to be able to bring all these people through the secret passageway did i get that right the secret passageway will only hold five people on the ship so what you're gonna they go on to explain so we get to pick five people to go through the passageway shard cove is only navigable to ships at high tide navigating the cove at night is too dangerous the jagged crystals lying just beneath the waves of the cover are nearly impossible to avoid hence you need to smuggle out as many as you can at this point, it's only five we can do, unfortunately. Okay, and so, so by... there's, there's five. So and there's plus two. And right. We can so so, it, so if I if I understand that correctly, the five would be like if, for example, so we're making just choices about who to bring how. So so for example, you leg him and a better life for uh, for him and his daughter. That's two. Uh, Daffred with the spouse and two kids. That's four. So he can't bring both Uleg and uh, Uleg and the and the daughter and Daffred and her family by the secret passage, right? Like, is that is that uh, I'm understanding that correctly? Like that, like that would because that would be six and that would be too many. Correct. They go on to explain. Base aboard the Ronald's prayer is limited, and each voyage to the cove increases the likelihood of seizing by the Rune Lord's forces, as it was convincing the captain to enter the cove even once required considerable skills of persuasion and considerable coinage do not waste a valuable resource make sure to get five on board who i use to your discretion well, we have five there and we can get another few when we leave our personal selves leave You're right right so we bas we basically picked the five that we want we probably want daffrid because that's four and probably somebody else probably Themelin. well look, look in the way that look in the way this is there's also a strategic and tactical cho choices we have to make who's most likely you know like who's going to be a problem to get past guards those are going to be well, the ones that we're going to want to take by the passage who's who's easier oh, to get past guards those are true. the ones that we're going to want to get past the like guards the no, probably, and we're going to no. have to analyze this a you little know what bit. I, I I look at it a different the way. The family because... is going to be easy to get past. Uh, all right, so we have a family of four under Daffid, D Daffred, and then there's everybody else's five. So the family of four is probably easy to get past on the docks with us. So I would suggest we get everybody else on in the passage. We need maximum people, but if they're not good of heart, if they're evil, I'm not bringing them. They will not get passage on this boat. Well, we're just going to have to interview these two kids and the spouse and find out who's evil and who's not. Agreed. He uh, he looks at you and says, Dwarf, that's not how it works. They've already paid for their passage. It is not for you to choose who gets out and who doesn't. We've already gone through their backgrounds and all are worthy of release from the tyrant Belmarius. By definition, those who are imprisoned here are imprisoned by evil. Yeah, like, look at the type of people that they are, too. Samuel's got a money, and he's going to have a big bag of money. That could be used for bribes. Filch is a thief. He's going to be a good liar. The Garla is already a guard, so he's going to be connections with the guardhouse. It might be easy to get past guards. Like, they, it, like the, the spouse and her kids are the most suspicious. You know, like, the, there's, it, there, there's some things going on here. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Like it might be better to do Uleg and Daffrid through the passageway and then have the money, the, the, the liar and the guard uh, who can actually assist in getting past guards to, 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 to go on the way out. Yeah, that's six. I feel though. like the, the Uleg is two and Daffrid is four. That's six. We have to have Daffrid and one of them. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I don't want to be on that group, but let's go because I want to go. Um, I don't want to be on the group of saving like, the children and stuff because I need a enemy, and this land is full of enemies. All right. Well, I'm also well on that <laughs> on that thing. I I am very curious about the plausibility of the last uh, encounter with guards being something you could force your way past. I I I, I highly doubt that that is that that shouldn't be a fight. That should that, that should be anything but a fight. She says you should not the meta so much. The meta. Is... No, that, that's actually that's actually not meta. Like meta would be to say it's a fight because it's a combat encounter. Like like I like I'm saying like that's like getting through TSA at the airport, dude. You're like you're not you're not gonna you're, like you go you go through that metal detector without anything in your shoes. Is how you get through. You do not go bringing an no, no. scene. Yeah, but this is medieval and like they're, they're it's a secure uh, country. And uh, if you just happen to like look someone the wrong way, you're gonna be arrested. That's yeah, they're, right, not, they're right, not checking right. their borders. Their borders. No, no, no. It's exa- right. dude, dude. I don't know what I don't know what planet you're from, but that's exactly the opposite. You're talking about fucking East and West Berlin getting through the Russians, dude. That is exactly what that is. That 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 is that is getting that is getting your ass out of North Korea, dude. Uh, it, it yeah, is gonna, well, it is going to it is going to be it is going to be secure to the gills. It's going to be exactly the opposite of uh, of uh, open borders. Open borders is the United States going into Canada. It's, it's not it's not getting from North Korea to South. I think Korea. it's going to be easier to get a family through than all these nefarious characters like this this thief. You got the first guy who's a nephew who's a thief who who knows what he's doing. He's out in freaking Copper Street. I mean, good God, Copper Street for crying out loud. I, I don't know. I think that the the the, da- the the Dafford clan we get them out last because who's gonna who's gonna have the heart to stop a couple little kids? All right, are we on shore yet? Because oh my God, go. all of them. So yeah. first of all, let's go through. Everyone gets one hero point, and what slots do you want? for your characters because you can get if you remember chris can get one seth can get zero and depending on if you are scrolls or swords or so forth you can get some other fun stuff it Ooh, okay. i get i get some petty things i remember last time i got a potion like i get i get some piece of crap like i, I like i don't get as much as everybody yeah, yeah. else but i get potion of healing or do i not no no i i or or like when i get a level or something i do i forget what the deal is no, I think I think you're right. It's like it's like in a level or something. When I get my reputation or something yes. like that, I start getting it. Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 you have you have no school, so you get nothing. Let's so Nix Knox gets nothing. Mister Peepers, you can get well. There's the all schools items, which is holy water, a lesser bomb, lesser antidote, lesser anti plague, minor healing potion. There you go. And then what are you? Are you uh, scrolls, spells, or swords? Swords. So then you can either get a lesser leper's elixir, a potency crystal, or shining ammunition. So you can get one of each. I can get one of each. Then well, you get one from the swords and one from the all. So what do you want? Okay, well, I'd, I want the healing potion, definitely. Okay. And the crystal thing sounds interesting. Let's go with that. Healing and crystal. You got it. Nella, what do you want? I'm going to do the same thing. One healing potion, one uh, potency crystal. Uh, Thorgrim, you get, you don't get the swords. You only get the uh, all item. Yeah, I'll take the healing potion, yes. Of course. Okay. Thordrin. Thordin? Thordin. What do you, what, what are you? Odin. Odin. Thordin. Thordin. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> so in the beginning of every adventure... You get two free items or one, depending on what schools you are a member of uh, in Pathfinder Society. Are you... I'm the Vigilant Seal? No, that's actually faction? something different. That's a faction. This is actually if you are swords, spells, or scrolls. This is like what division you are learning about. I would okay. presume you're probably, probably swords. Probably swords. Yeah, since you're a fighter. And... 
what you could do is you basically get three points. You could either do two things. You can either you can assign the points to multiple factions, uh, multiple schools. Most people don't do that. What you do is you put all three points into one I school, did. and then you get a free item beginning of every adventure. So you can get probably, I will say, you probably want a healing crystal, a healing crystal. You probably want a healing potion and a crystal. Sounds That's good. Probably what you want. <laughs> and the other thing you can do is not be part of a school, and then you get more downtime days. But if you're never going to craft, you don't care about that. It's I only- will be. I am a good crafter. I'm good at, uh, I'm a forge dwarf. If you want, you can be in no school, and in case you get nothing. But instead of eight downtime days, you get 12 downtime days, which can help in the long run if you're doing lots of crafting. But that's permanent. So, like, right now, Nix Knox gets nothing because <laughs> he's a, he's he's a not in any school. Yeah, give me all the downtime. That's fine. Oh, you want downtime? You don't want items? Uh, I mean, I can't change that, right? I mean, I mean, how many do you get? Eight versus 12 days? Yeah, you just get 50% oh. more days. So if it's a longer adventure, you get even more. So it depends on the si- length of the adventure. You get then, yeah, I'll take the more. items, the, the, the healing potion and the potency crystal. Yeah, and you get new items as you level up. They get better and better. And those are free. So I'll give you that. So everyone has a healing. Uh, Peepers, Nella, and Thoradin has a crystal. All right. Does anyone have any questions before you start on this adventure of death. Yeah, what can we do with that crystal? That uh, crystal's like a uh it's a plus 1 and a striking crystal for one ra- for one round. Okay. Cool. Uh if if our patrons are able to get us uh falsified documents to get us in and out, uh were were any such documents or any anything prepared to get any of these people out? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, what do these people need to get out? I mean, we know the boat. That's probably self-evident. But the other four, I don't know. Just getting them out past guards. Yeah, like... That you know, like, really like, sounds like, dubious. Or, or even such, so something like... Like, say, for example, uh, our papers included provision for three servants, right? Or four servants, like bot, yeah. like you know, like maids, yeah. like maid servants, or something like that. Uh, that would like that would be a big help on the second part. That you know, like we could, we'd, like when we leave, we could pass them off. Oh, see, they're on our uh, documentation as being as being our maid servants or whatever. You know, like like what what was what was their plan to get that? What was their plan to get these people out to have to get them past the guard? Because that's going to be a sticking point. It's like the, it's like whatever bluff yeah. we have to pull for that guard, we need an angle yeah. on that. Yeah. They say, unfortunately, we were only able to get five legal documents for yourselves and only yourselves. I presume you can make some forgeries or come up with a plan such as the one you just described on your own. As I said, bribes can go quite a long way. Yeah, and but the thing is, like, we have actually plus two with our normal stuff papers we have now, so like we can get everyone off if we just do things right. Like, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do things right. Well, we get a long let, way. Let, no, let, no, let, no, let, let's cross that bridge. Yeah. Why don't you actually? Why don't you actually get off the boat, Seth? I mean, you could spend four hours on this. Why don't we actually like start the adventure? Because you guys have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, we, we might learn like, things. Uh, we might learn things about the. I was <laughs> oh, say, I'm well, sure. It I'm seems sure. like we we have, we have a five sl- a guaranteed slots, and then a couple of uh, fungible ones that based. If on you our... think that us, all these people will be alive when we get to them, uh, you're, you're adorable. Yes, that's really funny. I, I, no, I was going to say what? we might learn something about the town that might. You know, oh, no, 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 it's true. It's true. Other no, out. no, you're right. You're right. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just like trying to think ahead to kind of like to like kind of structure our approach. Like, uh, like you're, but you're right. Like, Gar the guard. Like, you know, like he might be able to, he might be able to get us a copy of some document that we could use to help in forgery. The same thing for for this guy who works at the Ministry of Tides. He has access to legal. Or, or we might even learn that people under a certain age are allowed to travel without paper. Right, 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 right. right just right. Uh, and like, um, Thorgrim does uh, shoot a dagger eye to Nixnox, and it's like, mm, like mm, you're talking too much. 
Yeah, so let's go. And who do you like first? Like, I'm liking Filch first because we definitely have an in with him because uh, about the slippers, and he's already an underworld type. So he might be able. To, Agreed. Like, let's get him. Like, you know, the like EU. like do do him, and he might be able to help the next one. And then it's like dominoes. Like one will unlock another one, unlock unlock another one. Okay, you start approaching the city of gleaming architecture and beautiful vistas. Ah, so beautiful. Although the skyline still bears scars from the events that brought it into its present day, most of the structures stand as grand displays of the wealth and power of ancient Lassalon. Public construction projects dot the city, slowly easing damage caused by its shift through time. Does anyone wish yeah. to uh, do yes. any skill checks and knowledges about the city or anything yes. else? You want to know about anything? Let me know. Yes. I'm going to do a religion. A religion check. You don't do it. I do it. So what is your plus? Plus, plus five. Plus five. Sorry. What are you trying to learn about the city? I am impressed by This is a rune lord city. I've heard the name rune lord bantied around. What is up with that? What does that mean? You asked about the, you asked about the rune lords. You have to die. <laughs> oh, you use your religion, and you know that rune lords, they, they don't really exist. They're a myth. It's something yeah, not, people tell not. children at night to behave. It's, it's, a, it's a wives' tale. These things are, there's no such thing. Like, there might have been like 10,000 years ago, but rune lords don't exist. That, that's just, yeah, like, yeah, she's yeah. just pretending she's a rune lord. She's not real. Yes, this rune lord nonsense. Yeah. This nonsense. That's what happens. Oridin when you has a, a skill roll. Ar Arcana, um, uh, curse lore, as well as religion and occultism. So he's hopefully able to kind of like discern something from the situation. What's your plus for that? Um, for Arcana and curse lore, it's four. Religions five. Uh, occultism four. You know that Bellamarius jealously forbids the use of magic by anyone other than herself and her minions within the city. This Bellamarius prevents magic. She only uses it for herself. That, that's all you know, really. You don't know that much about it either. You, unfortunately, have not been brought up in the knowledge of this part of the world. Yeah, you guys are asking all the wrong questions. Mr. Peepers is just going to just get down to brass tacks here. He's going to talk. He's going to talk to the thieves, the nefarious people, and he's going to find out uh, how law abiding is are the guards? How flexible are they? OK, you know this off the top of your head. You know that the guards are called the Emerald Guards. And those are the city guards of Zin Isredal. They're highly trained and capable. They maintain a presence throughout the city. And you also know that graft and corruption are rampant amongst them. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Okay, now we have information. Okay, I share that with a group who is mostly that's that's ignorant, promising. That's ignorant good. of the uh, the situation. Yeah, Mister Peepers is going to lay down the law, basically. Does anyone have warfare lore? Oh, I Mr. was going to say, plus yeah, four, I, plus I, four. I, I, I have plus five. I'm trained in warfare law. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. Mister Peepers has us. He's got. Oh, it. really? You're trained? Yeah, I'm, I'm trained plus three. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trained plus five. Oh. Uh, oh, plus five is better. Yeah. You all know that Israel is the Western Kingdom of the nation of New Thassalon, which was founded by two surviving rune lords of ancient Thassalon. And Ezredal is the dominion of Balamarius, the so-called rune lord of Envy. And Zin Ezredal, the nation's capital, is located on the Peret Isle, which is where you're going now. And supposedly there was some rumor that it like got lost in time. That somehow the whole city got taken out of time and was disappeared for 5,000 years and just recently came back. But none of you really seem to know anything about that. But that's supposedly some kind of weird rumor. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's known, but no one knows the details about that, at least amongst you. 
Mm. I think this this might not be the right time. I might have to see the city's defenses and get through that first like get inside part. But uh, I want to use my warfare lore to just answer the question: if the get if it comes to a fight, breaking our way out is uh, is that a possibility? Like you know, like like if that last like the, those last people we have to escort on the thing to get to get past the guards, like like if we fail in that. And we're going to get normal arrested. normal run of the mill guards. Yeah. Like, it, like if we fail in that and it's going to come to getting arrested, is, is fighting even an option? Well, with that, you dock and you can see to just get off the boat, you need to go through four checkpoints, each with no less than two guards. And that's just to get off the boat. Well, uh, hmm. so, so I take that as the answer is no. Like the like that last thing is, is is bluff checks to get by, and we either get by or we don't. If we have to fight, we if we have to fight, we're 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 captured and or killed. That's what I'm hearing from that. Is it like like an, and I'll make a roll on that to confirm that is that if that's a fact or not. You know for a one hundred percent fact that if you get into a fight, your best option is to give up, get arrested, and to bribe the cards to get out of jail because you will die. That is right. Yeah, right. All right. All right. So, so you heard <laughs> that? So we heard that. So we got that clear. Yeah. yeah so right. you don't want all any right. part of that. All right. All right. That. Good. All right. That, that, well, cause, we could have failed that. that, that sometimes that has to get clear. False information. That, well, like, that sounds what like false for our business here. What is our cover for business here? Do we have one? I don't know. Yeah. He said we're like, yeah, we're dealers in Trillium. And yeah. Yeah. And, and we're here yeah. to and we're here to scout prospects. Like we have we like we have no samples. We have none of that. We're we're just we're, we're just an initial meet and greet, trying to make friends, trying to make contacts. Like get, get to know the lay of the land to see see if it's worth pursuing it any further. I'm an expert at that. That's what I do every day. So as you as you get off the docks, you're greeted by two emerald guards demanding to examine your travel papers. Each guard is clearly well armored well-trained, gleaming with magical weapons, armor, and equipment. Gleaming. Oh. Yes. And you could tell that these guards would easily be able to take on all five of you. One of them would be able to take on all five of you, let alone two of them and then their other 20 buddies nearby. Uh, paper, your papers, please. Yes, I produce. we produce our papers. Uh, my papers are in order. There are papers, orders. please. Oh, my papers are in order. They carefully look over your papers, look at you all, ask you to turn your head sideways to make sure that you match the descriptions in your paper, asking you I various cough. questions about your uh, your dealings. After several intense minutes, they hand your papers back and remind you that your papers expire in five days mm. for warning you you must keep your weapons stowed at all times while in the city and that there is a curfew in effect that you may only be permitted outside for an eight hour period during the day you must remain indoors at all other times as outlined in your travel papers with that, they say, enjoy your stay, and they hand you back your papers and push you along to get off the ship. At least they're friendly. Yeah, I move way up and out. So go immediately to Filch or one of the others, or yes, do we yes, do, yes, establish yes. like a... Yeah, like let's go to the low-hanging place. fruit. The low-hanging fruit? Um, Filch, I think, is one of them. Well, Glitch. Filch might have been thinking about exit strategies and stuff. Glitch. So. Oh my god. It's the city state of the Invincible Overlord. It, so. it is. This is the city of what it looks wow. like. And you can go through the docks, burst into the city, and it is packed with people. It is, although an impressed city, it obviously has quite the booming population, and the people seem to be fairly happy. Um, mm. And the city appears to be a very strange mix of new and old. Sure enough, some of the architecture you can tell is thousands of years old, and some of it is brand new. With that, mm -hmm. where do you wish to go first? Uh, as um, Nick's knock, I think we should go to Phil Cha. He is so, re Phil, he's ready to go. He's ready to leave. Let's get all the people. Envy, Envy Row. 
And I do not want to be here East. long. Envy Row East. Off the we'll alley between spend. Copper Street and Loyalty Way. We go there. We must make our must make haste. It is slow going as getting there, although it's not very far, you must go through several checkpoints where your papers were examined multiple times. Plus, going through the city is slow going as it has packed the gills with people. It takes you two hours to get to your location of where Filch's flat is supposed to be. The area you see is a rundown flat, typical of the residents of Envy Row East. Were our papers in a, order? Wh- while we're walking, who has like good? Uh, uh, Do, not somebody, in order. Can, can somebody check to see if we've been followed or if we're being watched, please? Uh, Mr. Paper, Mr. Paper's job he is not going to be doing that. He's a merchant and he's playing the role. Well, if none of you are doing it, you have no idea. If you're I'll, I'll do it if nobody's doing it. Yeah, okay. I'll, and Peepers I'll try. I'll try to playing. leverage my warfare law yeah, lore you, you do and it next, Ox. scouting to see if I can figure it out. You don't think you're being followed directly, although you can tell there's eyes and ears everywhere. There's guards everywhere. Your papers are being checked every 15 minutes, and who knows how many people here are secret spies reporting back to the government. All right, so that that implies that we should tarry a moment and solidify our cover and pretend to be merchants for a little bit. That that's what that tells me. And yeah, like, can, yeah, can, we're can, merchants. Can, can, can we can we just can we can we spend can we say we spend a half an hour like doing merchant things so we look like we're merchants and then and, and like sure. take more time getting there so we don't bolt right there but we kind of find our way there as a merchant would. Sure. Are we so, doing the uncut gems thing? Have you seen that movie? You should see it. You spend two and a half hours getting over to where the flat is. So you spend two hours traveling, and then throughout that, you spend an extra 30 minutes sort of playing up your merchant role, talking to people, finding out, you know, trade routes and so forth. And you find where your instructions were told you to go, and you see the flat, but it is locked with bars on the front door. The windows are boarded over, and fragments of a flower pop lie beneath one windowsill. What do you do? Thordom, you're very strong. I'll cover you with my trident. I am strong. I will, uh, you know, force it. Ben Bard's left gate. Which one are you trying to do? You're trying to. Do you want to knock first? Oh, is it? I think it's always barred. It's like locked. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's like, locked. Like for, for, from the outside? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was like something on the outside, like something was, like not like not, not right? just not just a strongly locked door. Like it, it like it's like something occurred in there, and then and then it was uh, like and then it was sealed up, or just it's a locked door. Correct. There is a <laughs> lock barring the front door. A the lock. Windows okay. are boarded over, and there's fragments of a flower pop lying beneath one windowsill. So. There's no bars. It's just the lo- the door's locked. The front door's locked. <laughs> That's all. And, but the lock is a you know just a regular old lock. So yeah, you could you could knock. Uh, so, so so there might be somebody living there, and we and we can knock first and see yeah, if anybody's I'll knock. home. I'll, I'll knock to see if someone's home. I mean, I may get a flower pot dropped on my head, but you knock, 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 knock. You wait. A few minutes go by. Nothing. You don't hear any movement or anything from inside. I say loudly. You try, trying to be deceptive. Does somebody else is trying deception? Maybe wants to do this. Uh, but I want to. I want to say loudly for any ears that might be hearing. I don't know. That person said with the uh, the like the tr- the uh, insight into who might be a good trader contact. They said that person lived here, but it looks like there's nobody here. I don't know. Maybe knock again. Yeah, I'll keep like knocking, knocking. You knock and you don't. Uh, All right, Mister Peter. No one is- comes to the door and you don't hear anything. He's Mr. doing Peepers, a full circuit. He's going to be doing a perception Peep check it. around the building for other ways in. Mr. Peepers ways in. Mr. Peepers, you were searching around looking for another way to get in. And on the back wall, you found some graffiti. All right. So he reads the graffiti. Uh, Mr. Peepers reads the graffiti. Yeah, hopefully he can. Yes. You can concentrate and do a decipher writing to decode the markings to see if you can understand what it might oh, say. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh right, my he's going to do occultism? 
Okay, it's a secret roll. What is your I do it? You do not do it, and you, you pretty much 13. never roll right. anymore. Uh, nope. 13. Nope. Ah. Oh. Well, you rolled a natural one, so that's a critical failure. So, um, you see, this is why you don't do it. I oh, know he rolled natural one for I, you. I, no, no, I know. I roll. I roll. What is your occultism? Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. You have no idea what any of this means. All right, so I. Go I have around a the building. Arcana. There's no other ways into the building. Is that on the wall? Nope. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just no, on the back, back wall. wall. We don't. We don't see it. Yeah. yeah. No. Right, so now I'm on back. The back wall. Yeah. I'm now I'm back. I've seen there's no other ways inside this building, and I tell everybody, "Hey guys, there's this graffiti. I don't know what it means. You guys should check it out." All right. I I, I, I sneak I sneak over there. I walk over there. I'll stand by the front door. Because okay. I'm all ready for anything happens here. Arcana, occultism, religion, or society. If someone wants to try to figure out what the heck is going on, I have Arcana and occultism with a plus four. You use both of those knowledges and still have no idea what this is. Uh, you said I could use religion. Correct. So I will use religion on that, and I have a plus seven. You are able to understand this. Perfectly, unlike everyone else. Woohoo! Oh, actually, it's only society you can use. It's a special one. I made a mistake. Oh, okay. Does anyone have society? Uh, nope. I would think Mr. Peepers has society. He's a man of society, a man of skill. Does anyone have society? No one? No one has society? Yeah. 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 Plus, plus, plus two are untrained. Wow, that's literally the most important skill to have. Wow, you know, I would think that uh, a rogue uh, would uh, have that. But Mr. Peepers is unconventional. He does it. He does what he wants to do. He's his own man. Untrained. Well, yeah. let's see. Society is definitely a rogue skill. Definitely trained rogue skill. I've got plus one society. No, you didn't put a point into it, though, did you? Did you well, put anything? Well, into well I don't it? have a lot of points to spend around. I you know, know. yeah, it's I untrained, right? Yeah, it's untrained. None, none of us are tra- none of us are trained in society, right? Well, it's cu- it's unfortunate that you didn't that you're over there and I'm over here because as you're deciphering that, uh, Thorgrim's battle axe, which he has now in his right hand, and his shield is raised, uh, slashes down on the door and the lock, trying to break into this place. All right, give me an athletics check. Breaking and entering in the militaristic police state. Um, I'm for it. You you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's that's, go. That's let's go. Let's go. Dude, you are absolutely. Remember that kid in Singapore who fucking got the caned? You are absolutely yes. that kid. You are 100 percent going to be that kid. Athletics check. Let's see. Oh, my athletics is 17. You take a big mighty swing and you don't hit you don't hit it quite right and it uh it stays put. I do it I do it again. You do it again, all right. Yeah, yeah, I want to get in there. All right, do it and again. Suddenly I'm see chopping much... away. I'm chopping away. Okay. Go right ahead. Let's see how much uh, let's see how long it is before you attract some guards' attention. Roll it again. <laughs> Nineteen. Pretty good, pretty good. You miss again. It's not quite it's pretty tough to get this uh, door open. I uh, might want to try it once more. Dude, if a 19 misses, then stop it. Stop it. Oh, no, hello. Hello. Natural 20. Bam. Go, finally. Uh, he smashes the door open. Critical success. And the door flies open. Thorgrim, the paladin. Not paladin. Champion. The champion paladin, who is all not, about not, not lawful. might and law no, and not, order. Not, no, no, not right. Incorrect. <laughs> not about law. It's all about chaos. Nope, about good. Chaotic good or just neutral good? Are you, yeah, are you neutral good? Neutral good. He's all about keeping the flow. He's nope. all about being one with the universe. Nope. Doing doing the right thing by whatever means necessary. <laughs> right. Yeah, doing exactly. Good thing. He's Rorschach. He has broken in. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. This flat. And inside, you see a thin layer of dust covers the floors of this sparsely furnished wood-walled apartment. The northern wall bears crude etchings, graffiti, and other odd markings. Otherwise, the inside looks like it's been abandoned for quite some time. Thorgrim has made it inside, right? Thorgrim, go. Go. So you go inside, and you see... Nothing is here. It is empty and devoid of 
human life. But there is graffiti on the wall, which I read. There is graffiti on the wall. What is your society to understand what you might see? That's a problem. Well, everyone can read society, even if you even if you have none trained, anyone can try to spend ten minutes. Although, in this case, you actually need to know something. So we'll 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 see if you could figure it out. Would you have like a plus one probably? Some garbage like that? Uh, yeah, plus one. You don't roll it, Chris. I roll Oh it. sorry, I have a plus or, one. Or th- so Thoradin. Thoradin goes in and Thoradin is looking at the graffiti and he sees Flitch's name in the graffiti. And after 10 mm-hmm. minutes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the ciphers mm-hmm. through squiggly marks and hobo signs that uh, he's hiding out in the sewers. Ah, I, I'm taking my notepad that I've been doodling on for 10 minutes. I said, look, if you turn it clockwise and cover one eye, it says he's in the sewer. That's going to be great. Hmm. Not a fan of the sewer. Is anyone? You guys just spent a whole adventure in the sewers. It's going to be like a reunion. Those those sewers were nice, though. <laughs> I feel these sewers are not so nice. Uh, all right, so I think we should do a search in here, though, for anything else. Any other clues or anything else that might be left behind? Sure. You search around. It is completely 100% empty. Whoever mm. was here has not only abandoned the place and picked it clean, but boarded up over the, all the windows and all that. There's nothing of value in here other than some dust bunnies. Ha. All right. I think we should leave. And then um, I want to exit and then also make it look like it was never broken in and we were never here. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're like, let me let me just put this door back let me, on. Let me, the- yeah. <laughs> let me put the door back. And let me put a little that shrubbery over there. Let's cover All right. It. We got to spend four days to craft. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering about that. Like, can we use crafting skill to kind of like try to bend it back together again so it's not obvious? Of course you can. It takes a while, though. Does it take hours or does it take minutes? Can we not? Um, crafting? If it, if, if, it, if it takes five minutes, I'll do it. If it's anything longer than that, forget it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to take longer than that. All right. Skip it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Papers wants to check his six and do a perception check for anyone following the group. You can always set fire to the house. There is um, no one you think following you directly. Okay. How would one get to the sewers, I suppose, is the next question. Getting to the sewers won't be a problem. Uh, the one issue is it just says he's in the sewers. The sewers is pretty big. So that's like saying, oh, yeah, he's uh, he's in, in the, the state of Alaska. Exactly. Like, where where is he? You have no idea. The Look for the closest entrance near this house. That's where right, we're assuming that's exactly. gone down. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. You... Uh, you spend a few minutes and you find a well-oiled grate that leads down into the sewers. Do you wish to use it? Yes. Yes. Marching order. Mr. Peepers first. Might as well. Jumping down. Going down. I will take the Ria. I'm a little more Sneak. ambivalent about going into Sneaking. the sewers, but I guess we'll do that. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, Tales from the Black Lodge. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at RollForCombat.com. You can also find us and play various games on our Discord channel at Discord.RollForCombat.com. You've been listening to Roll for Combat. You rolled a podcast critical success.